<clears throat> what's up, what's up, what's going on everybody? Uh, Dan McCall here with Whatever It Takes Wednesday. We're at episode episode 19. I got my man Anthony Terrell in, in the building here. Um, a couple really cool things about Anthony Terrell. He's, he's a professional fighter, trainer, entrepreneur, model. Um, I put a little description of him in the thread or, or in the in the post, if you will, that, that actually came out of like an article that, that was published without him even knowing it. I thought that was kind of cool. We were talking about that prior prior to the uh, to the episode. Um, but uh, we're we're gonna kick this thing right off. Make sure you guys hit the love button. Give us give us some love here on on uh, Facebook Live. Um, and uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get right right into this. Peel back the layers of my man. Um, I'm sure that you guys are going to be able to learn learn lots of stuff. Uh, as you guys know, if you follow me, I'm real humble. You know, always always uh, looking to learn from everybody that I that I get in contact with, and and the people that we bring on these shows are, are in the top are in the top one percentile, like what they do. You know what I mean? That's like uh, like if if you follow me, and you know me, you know you might know that I have a black belt. Like that's that that's, that's uh, you know the one percent. You know, because a hundred people join and only one person's left over at the end, right? So <clears throat> this guy's uh, an awesome martial artist, and I, I know I just know that I could learn a lot, a lot from him, um, you know, in, in, in that in that arena. So I'm really looking forward to just picking his brain and just just hearing his perspective. Like there ain't no right or wrong answer to anything that we're going to be talking about. We're just going to be sharing my perspective, Anthony's perspective, and moving on and, and you know moving on here in conversation. What's up, Stacy Shuttle? I see you on there. Give us some love. <laughs> What's up, Sheila Nelson? I see you on there too. So, so here, so here we go, man. So here, slide up a little bit so we can oh, see you better. So, it's a good looking man. We got to get him up here in the, <laughs> in the front. Let us know if the lighting's good too. I got some lighting. You want to pull that over a little bit? What do you think? It looks a little bit dark still, huh? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. There we go. It might be a little bit helpful there. So, <clears throat> so for, first question here is, <clears throat> who is who is uh, Anthony Terrell? Where are you from? Who are you? Where'd you grow up? I'm a Jersey boy. I'm from Sicklew, New Jersey, actually. Uh, graduated from what's now, that's Winslow now, but it was Edgewood. I was actually the last class of Edgewood. So yeah, Sicklew, New Jersey. I've been, I've been all over, but I'm back home, uh, doing what I do now. Awesome, man. Awesome. So. So I know you. I know you have a, a background as a professional fighter and stuff like that. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna dig into that. Sure. Digging that as one of the things. What, what got you into that? Were you an athlete growing up? I've always um, been. I've always. I've always been really acrobatic and athletic. I never had. That was. I kind of. That's something I was kind of naturally born with. I had a lot of natural born talents that I. I wasn't aware of as talents until I tried to do something with it. And everybody, you know, that was kind of like the knock on me. And. Um, you know, it made me have to work actually a lot harder, and it took time for me to get to a place to realize, you know, what hard work in that aspect was. Because, like I said, I grew up pretty. I grew up everything physically. Phys physically, things came very easy to me. I taught myself how to do backflips, and you know what I saw. You know, I grew up in the you know kung fu was huge. I mean. Bruce Lee era, Ninja Turtles, you name it. I grew, <laughs> I grew up watching all of it. I loved all of it. And, you know, karate lessons back then was, was expensive. So, you know, I never got a chance to actually train perfect, you know, train as a martial artist as a kid or do any of the athletic things that I wanted to do. So I did them all my free time, you know, me and my friends. And I played in the streets all the time. You know, I was always, I was always busy. I didn't think about it or take it seriously until I was, you know, a, like a junior in high school. And at that time it was like, you got a lot of grades to fix before that's going to happen. <laughs> so, but um, uh, going through life after high school, and I I gravitated towards dancing. That was kind of something I was known for in high school, dancing, break dancing. It was just, uh, you know, I've, I grew up in a household, you know, full of dancers, and it was just like that. I loved dancing, and uh, I mixed my love for martial arts and acrobatics with you know dancing, and I ended up break dancing. You know, go figure. That uh, actually injured me at one point in my mid 20s, and I had to seek chiropractic help. After seeing a chiropractor who told me to start doing some form of training to strengthen up my muscles in my back that I actually damaged, I 
at that time looked up something to do. I, I never really cared for actual exercise and stuff like that. Like I said, I was, you know, kind of, I was lazy to that degree because everything came easy to me. So looking up, um, looking up things to do to strengthen my back, I came across a martial art that I had fell in love with from like the sixth grade on, you know, it was a, a martial art called Capoeira. It's a Brazilian martial art that basically infused, uh, it's, it's a, it's deep. It's a, it's, it's a deep story behind it. Um, just to cover it briefly, it was basically the martial art that slaves disguised as a dance, and they caused a re they used it to, to, to for a revolt against slavery. And um, I'm not sure what time period it was, but it was back in uh, Brazil. So that's where that came from. Regardless, I discovered it in sixth grade. I mean, a cousin of mine did it for a talent show. And I, ever since then, I always had a love for it. I always looked into it and whatnot, but there wasn't any places in the area training it or whatnot. But anyway, I always incorporated the movements that I knew in, you know, in my dancing techniques and whatnot. So um, after injuring myself and looking up things, ways to strengthen my back, I came across that martial art and there were actually lessons in a place in Philadelphia at the time where I, where I was living. I went to that place, this was circa 2006, 2007. I started doing that to strengthen my back and because I actually loved it, when I looked it up, I made sure it was being taught by an actual legit guy. It wasn't Americanized, it wasn't watered down and I pre that that literally put me on my track as a, as a professional fighter in the martial arts. From Capoeira, I learned Jiu Jitsu from Jiu Jitsu MMA to here I am now, and it's always helped with my movement. It definitely strengthened me up in ways that I wasn't that I that I wasn't strong. Uh, it, it made me a much better athlete. It, it increased my reaction time. It, it, it you know it helped out tremendously because the way my teacher taught it was, you know, if you're familiar with copywriter, if you look it up, it's completely different in actual Brazil than than it is you know in a lot of states areas, stateside, you know, they have, they, the legalities and things are completely different, but in, in, in Brazil, yeah, it's, the technique and stuff, right? in Brazil, it's the second largest sport to, to soccer, so, you know, you're talking about a pretty big thing, and my, my, um, my instructor, Mesa, Mesa Dimitrius, well, um, of Aruan de Capoeira, he, uh, he was a general in the army in Brazil for a long time, and Capoeira was his biggest passion, so as soon as he was out, that's what he dedicated his time and his life to, and he's, he's still an active uh, instructor uh, in, I believe, Texas right now. And um, so, but the way he taught Capoeira infused a lot of real life self defense techniques, a lot of uh, grappling techniques, a lot of jujitsu. It, it, it was infused with so many different things, and I'm like, I, it, you know, it, it blew me away to know that these are these are these weren't just techniques that I could. You know that I could do to look good. You know, it wasn't just the acrobatic sense. There's there's different kinds of capoeira and the acrobatic stuff in the that that's for show. You know, that's to make it look good. And then there's there are specific techniques that can take you out. So we went from you know I did that for four years till the group kind of fell apart due to legal issues. And then me and the the second head of the group started teaching at a marsh uh, MMA and Jiu Jitsu school. And the program didn't go over too well there, so me and this kid started training jujitsu and started training MMA. Bam! Mm -hmm. I, I immediately got so interested. I mean, I got I, I've always loved martial arts. I didn't know that that was your start. Your start in martial arts, Capoeira. Capoeira, yeah, literally, literally was cool. like I said that fast me into, but that was like I said I've always been in love with martial arts. I bought Bruce Lee books. I've read it. I've studied it. Yeah. You know. You know. From 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 that aspect and. You know that, that's something I've always been in love with, and it just dawned on me because it, it never it never dawned on me like what actually got me to this point. Because a lot of people know me growing up, they was like F a fighter, perfect fighting. I'm, I was like, hey, I don't, I, I don't know. You know, I don't know, I don't know either. It just happened. I feel I tell people I feel like fighting kind of chose me because it, I've been it's something that I've been attracted to and been in love with and obsessed with. You know, actual martial arts. I can't just you know call it fighting because my mindset on it now is completely different. You know, fighters. Every every one of us has some form of fighter in us, you know. Fighting to me 
which made it easy at that time in my life to walk into an actual cage and face combat was life itself had gotten yeah. really hard for me. So let, let me ask you about that real quick. So, so what, what was that? What was that feeling like going going into your first your first cage, man? It was exhilarating, to be honest. So I, I mean, it it was. Like, how did you feel? Like scared, excited? Honestly, I, I remember not. It was <laughs> numb. It was numb. You're I numb. It was numb. Like being at a funeral almost. Yeah, with with a, at a, yeah, almost at a funeral for someone you don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, like you're just like oh like, god, I feel their pain, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't really feel anything. So I'm walking into the situation, and I would never forget. I just thought about this not too long ago because I heard the I heard the actual. Song yeah, that's a good question because a lot of people. You, you know what I mean? Because a lot of people probably wonder like how how does yeah, it's, how it's, does he feel like there's no feel going when it, going when into it, there. There's no. Real, I mean, I've done wrestling tournaments, jujitsu tournaments, but not like an MMA fight. That's like a real fight. Well, more, I mean, more of a real fight. I mean, you can. <clears throat> We can talk about the differences of it, but regardless, you know what it feels like to yeah. walk into. I feel live. nervous walking. Exactly, into you're you're walking into yeah. live competition. Yeah. All eyes are I on you. God's it's like trying to destroy me. Exactly. So <laughs> so it's you know it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a similar feeling. I can't I can't yeah. say that it's a different feeling. It's not too much different, probably. Yeah, because you know it's yeah. I imagine if you're looking at it from that from that aspect, but I feel like I've because uh because of fighting and the severity of it, it's changed it's changed my competition outlook to where if I'm not walking into a fight I don't have the same I don't have the same buzz I don't have the same fears I don't have the same it's I I, I, I walk through life easier now I walk through life way stronger now because by being able to make that walk so I've did tournaments before fighting I did a lot as an amateur before before making a go as a professional fighter that's what made me I was I, mean, I was certain that I wanted to know what the what the real thing felt like, you know. Yeah. Let's lose the Emmy, everything, and I feel like I can. I felt like I could do it, and that that, that was the best. That was probably the, the most exhilarating experience that I have to say. I mean, I, and I tell people this all the time because I, fighting it's like a, it's like a drug. It's like a drug. It, it there's there's nothing compared. There's nothing. Nothing, nothing I have ever experienced can compare to the embodiment of, of, of feelings from, I'm talking from one second to the next, from mm -hmm. holy shit, I'm scared to death, to holy shit, I'm excited, to oh shit, I'm nervous, to oh shit, I'm, I'm, I want to kill this guy, you know what I'm yeah, saying, like, for, like, every emotion, and like, you think about, yeah, you think about bottling up all these emotions, and then, the, you know, Taking on the, not just the professional, but the but the martial arts aspect of it, and really just finding a a way to funnel that into going out there and being the best version of yourself as a fighter, you know. And that's that you know that that to me was what helped me keep it together, and that kind of helped me, you know, do well as a professional because I didn't do great as an amateur, and I didn't have the same fears because it was like, you know, first time competing, you know, the typical nerves and. It's always a, you know, a little ice that needs to be broken. Once you get out there, you, you know it's all fine and dandy. But it, it nothing nothing compared to when you walked out there for that fight. And now it's like you know it's it's the same. How, it's a different high, but it's it's, yeah. oh, it's like it's familiar. You but know, it, it I feels to... better now. You still we still all. I don't care what anybody says. Everybody, even at the highest of levels, they still go through all those emotions and within minutes and seconds <clears> before the fight, and then. I don't know, you know, for everybody else, but I know once I hear my walkout song, it kind of just, it just washes away, and you walk into a, a whole nother state of existence, and it's like, for that time, um, I'm, I'm my best and primitive, <laughs> Make most do primitive it right now. self, man. I'm telling you, listen, there's nothing, there's nothing You're like it. You get me high just, just thinking about it, the thought like, of it. It is nothing like it, man, and to walk away <clears throat> I was going to ask you about your morning, like your morning rituals and stuff like that. Do you have any rituals you do do before a fight? Like, before like any like self talk or like read a certain book or listen to a certain song or anything like that? Food, food. <laughs> <laughs> I watch a lot of. That's food. your love. Yeah, no, hands mm -hmm. down, hands down. I'm a, I'm not addicted to any. I'm not addicted to <laughs> anything as much as I love food. <laughs> And um, but um, food. Honestly, I watch. Honestly, it's weird. I don't understand how or why, but I watch a lot of food stuff. 
Like because I'm like so you're, you're watching. You're not. You're not. You're not eating. No, I'm. 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 I'm you talk. You said before fight stuff. Yeah, like well, like what the stuff. Like that you ritual do. wise, like uh, for all right. So so the process goes like this. Uh, weight cut week. Uh, dehydration that it's, you know, t sucking out the most. Uh, to, to for weigh-ins. After weigh-ins, there's a rehydration process, a window of time where I only rehydrate with fluids, and then I begin to eat. So. During the week of weight, the week of weight cut, I would say the day before weigh-ins, so that weigh-ins are typically Friday. So Thursday night, when I usually typically cut the most, my typical ritual is to prepare all of my rehydration and my recovery meals, because those are all vital keys in a quality recovery to be, you know, back at my normal weight you know, replenish my body with everything that I've just depleted it of to make weight. Yeah. And then, you know, then it's, you know, it's fight time. But yeah, that's my, my normal process. I, I, I typically, typically make a specific oatmeal. I pack uh, specific types of food. Yeah. Um, rehydrate with, with specific um, types of fluids. And stuff. A lot of that um, stuff's kind of across the board, really, right? Like a lot of the fighters do the same type same same type of process. No, I was trying to see if there's anything <laughs> different about you. No, in comparison to I mean, a lot I'm of so I'm so sure that I know for a fact because I'm familiar, I know so many different fighters. No, yeah, because some people, I, even myself. Okay. Yeah, you know, this was you know, this was trial and error. You know, it yeah. was you know there's there's been times you know a handful of times where I did it wrong. Yeah, just point blank wrong. Yeah, um, it's the best way to learn sometimes, yeah. right? <laughs> Listen, my 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 experiences, my experiences, my gift. <laughs> Are painful uh, experiences of messing up. Yeah, so from other from uh from the experience of doing it wrong to doing it not so wrong to doing it a little better to you know it it got better with time to I would say my last fight I felt my best cutting cutting weight and you know walking to the fight. But yeah, some people do it completely different. They you know they have different uh, measures of rehydration. Uh, I mean, if you if you're familiar with weight cutting, you know it's a very risky, very touchy, dangerous thing that uh, you can you can damage yourself with damage yourself by doing. And sure, sure. Some people, you know, uh, Dan, Daniel Gormier for years he, he didn't do it right, even on a, even on the Olympic level. I believe he wasn't able to he wasn't even able to compete um, in the Olympics because he had a tragic weight cut. And you're talking about you talking about a, you're talking about yeah. an American. Yeah, who wrestled for how many years? You know, yep, the, yep. Body, the body can only take but so much. But I mean, I experienced, I experienced that you know? before. But lose, I lost like twelve pounds in a week, and, and I wasn't used to doing that kind of thing. And I, I went in there, and but I was winning halfway through the match, and then, uh, and then all of a sudden, I got all pale and felt like I was going to throw up, and I held on for dear life, and I lost. That was my first jiu-jitsu tournament. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so. we can we can all listen. <laughs> the mind over matter. Well, all years ago, goes, but. So far, before our actual, you know, the science of our actual body is like, yeah, so, interesting. But, I love hearing about that stuff because it's like it's deep it's stuff it's, that it's, I, I I like all that kind of stuff. And, yeah, no, it's, it's something that fascinated me too as well. Once yeah. I learned, once I as I was learning it and experiencing it for, 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 from experiencing these things firsthand, and then you know being a part of a, a team and seeing so many other people go through it and learning it from you know people that have been doing it, whether they've done it right or do it wrong. You know, I do my own research. I oh, I research yeah. a lot. I research. Yeah. I research, I reach out to people, I communicate, I, I make sure I, stay, I educate myself on a lot, on anything of interest, especially in, in the realm of science and health and wellness and fitness and sports science and, you know, that's, that's, that's my field and I, you know, I love, I love her. And it's funny because these are these, I always think about how, to, I know, because, only because people ask me, it's not something I think about, people ask me, what are, why are you doing what you do or how did you become you know, somebody asked me once, how, how in God's name did you become a fighter? And I, I, I wasn't able to answer that question for like a year. And it dawned on me one day, like what I obsessed over as a child. You know, what what did I feed my brain, you know, my, my, my psyche so much? And I mean, I, I, I couldn't name a movie if it didn't involve some form of action that involved fighting. You know, if it wasn't Van Damme, if it wasn't Arnold, if it wasn't a Rocky, if it wasn't Kung Fu flicks, if it was, everything I kind of, and, you know, I was obsessed with had some form of combat involved with it. You yeah. know, and then, you know, my love for just karate and martial arts and all these things, you know, that, that was, that was obvious. So I was just like, you know, I, I guess I can't say that I'm that 
shocked that I um, uh, ended up, you know, pr professionally fighting. And then on top yeah. of that, the first thing I ever wanted to do, you know, they all ask you that question, and, and you're a kid, oh, what do you want to do when you grow up? And uh, I wanted to be a scientist. That was one of the first, <laughs> I was obsessed, I was obsessed with science. I, I, I used to I used to get in trouble because I would take my grandmother's meat from out of her like packaging and stuff and I would take it in like the back room I would hide and I would pretend I was dissecting and stuff and then of course I was a kid I would forget it was back there and she would smell it days later because the meat rotted and <laughs> kicked my ass because of it but she had a lot of encyclopedias and thesauruses and stuff and I just would face first into all of them just didn't even know what I was reading about but it, you know as I got older these things started to make sense because I wasn't just reading those things but I was I was paying attention to, I watched a lot of documentaries, a lot of science stuff, anything that had to do with wildlife and all those things on Discovery. I was, I was that kid, you know what I'm saying, looking into those things. So as I got older, you know, I stirred away from it, of course, but when I got reintroduced to uh, fitness because of being injured and then because of trying to better myself physically, it, you know, the how-to immediately turned to the science of the body, and that's, that's just something I still to this day i'm still learning more and more i'm always looking to learn to learn more on that on, in that topic you know yeah it doesn't just yeah i love that you're, you're you're like humble you're it like, helps it helps everyone it's not just me you know what i'm saying it's like and that's the thing it's like you know help 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 you i, I just want to i want i tell people i said my, my slogan is help me help you because in the in the realm of reality is that you can't help anybody that doesn't want to help themselves Right. So that's why right. it's like, no, I, I would have never, I wouldn't know a damn thing that I know right now if I never knocked on certain doors, if I never took the initiative to even ask or to seek, I wouldn't have it. Mm -hmm. So that alone, had, that alone gave people the, you know, the, the, the eyesight to say, oh, this kid is serious. And they obliged. And that's, and the way the world, kids take that, take that as one lesson that you ain't going to learn in, in, in school no more. Is that initiative? Take it. You want something? Don't 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 keep it to yourself about it. Go find out how to get it. Go go find out. Go find somebody that's doing it. Somebody that did it. You gotta go after information. All right, and be you know, be methodical about it and be analytical about it too, because you're not always going to receive information that is right. Or there's best because a lot of times there's there's so much information out there. A lot yeah. of times it's not always, oh well, that's wrong. No, yeah. that may be wrong for your case. That may be wrong. Well, you for know what his I say about case. you know what I say about that about a lot of that stuff is, is is you know there's a lot of perspectives out there and you just gotta and you just gotta take what the points that are being given from each one because like Completely. like like the, the there's a, the contradicting there's like there's always a good contradicting saying for every every saying like like the people but like those. You know, good things come to those that take action. That means yeah. to take action. You know, good things come to those that wait. That means exercise patience because you're playing the long game. So they're like, they exactly. mean completely, exactly. Different exactly. Different things. completely different things. It doesn't mean the one's Not right and the other wrong. one's wrong. Exactly. They're both, they're both points. Exactly. So, and you know, which it, goes with what you're talking you about, that, like getting different those, perspectives. Right? Those two perspectives, I'm glad, I, that, that's perfect that you said those specific two perspectives. Because yeah. I, 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 I made a post recently about that because... I said, I said, uh, the old me, who the old me was raised to be patient, relax, da 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 da. da. The new me, it is a different person. Yeah. I, I'm. I don't wait. I go get. I chase. Yeah. I, I, I. That that new person that I am is at war with who I used to be, and it's like you don't you don't exist no more to yeah. me because I've discovered a different <laughs> way of things now. Like you said, it's not neither. Neither are necessarily wrong. Neither are necessarily right. But there's times and places, and that's what that was. My my status was about deciphering the the right things, the the, the timing of things, and it was uh it was relative to fighting because that's fighting is is something that taught me all three of those things. It taught me be patient. It yeah. taught me aggress, attack, create opportunity, and it also taught me timing. It taught me all three of those things that were lessons that I got also from life that are now that I also can that I implement in life as well. And I, that's that's just just pray if my phone wasn't dead, I would literally read you the exact status 
and I that that I really yeah. did, but that's just that's, that's pretty ironic that you just happen to say those that you brought up that specific analogy because that that is, that is true, that is true. But the, you have to think about it because I'm you know I'm we're all students, we're all still students of in life, and that is something that into that tailors to somebody's life. So yeah. somebody's asking you for yeah, advice. Yeah, like one person might need the other advice. Like That's you got to be patient, buddy. Yeah, an expert because the guy that is because taking action, he is taking action. So, exactly. You know, so it's, and you it's hard. You have patience too because you want it tomorrow. Exactly. But then the guy that's the guy that's like, uh, you know, you're, when you're in that space where you're <coughs> the opposite, I'm, it needs I'm to take action. I'm still waiting. Patient. I'm patient. I'm waiting. No, yeah. no, no, no. Stop waiting. You got to take action. <laughs> exactly. <It's> like, <laughs> well, all this time I thought I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah. Meanwhile, but then you know you open your eyes and you see people <laughs> doing different things and you start to get intrigued and you're like all right well maybe maybe there's a flaw in what i was taught or what i was learning. you have to be you, you have to question it you have to question that you got to police your own self and you got to take chances you got to do different things and that and you know only thing in life life is going to if you allow it and you open yourself up to it you, you'll see how these things work there's going to be a time where you have to be patient uh, there's things that right there's there's specific things right now i'm being specifically and extremely patient about and then there's some things that I'm not I, I'm i not waiting yeah, for yeah you can't afford to be patient for some stuff right no no not, I not, see you not John what's certain, up buddy for certain things no for certain things not at all for certain <laughs> things you want to you want to go out there you know some people say, you know, wait, a lot of people oh wait for wait you gotta wait for the right opportunity that under circumstances I, that I don't agree with on well, many circumstances certain circumstances because opportunity is something that people don't realize a lot of us have the power to create a lot of us have the ability to create and a lot of people don't use it there's yeah. a difference like you said you talk about that one percent there's a there's a there's many percentiles That's a big, uh, there's many percentiles in in the realm of 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 things and getting shit done i mean if you take a look at the forbes list of people um a lot of them don't come they don't, they don't come from what people would expect them to come from yeah you know it took some serious fortitude and it took people making things happen and then responding to those things accordingly to continue to make other things happen just going in a different direction to eventually get to a move, place move, of, and you know and that's a, that's an analogy that's <laughs> a, you know that also tailors to fighting is you know it's how things are uh, instead of how things yeah. are created you know but that's a, that's a like life, when you're coaching people lesson. you can't coach people unless they're taking action because then you can be like all right you need to you need to slip or you need to keep your chin up instead of top down when you're dipping and Different things like that you can tweak as you go, right? Yep. So, yeah, so awesome, uh, awesome stuff. Good to see you on here, John. Thanks for thanks for chiming in here, man. So, <clears throat> hey, real quick, guys, too. Uh, I, I, I'll put I'll put your links below, like your social media links below. But mm -hmm. where can people find you, man? Because you, I, I, uh, one thing really cool about him is he's he's got awesome he's got awesome videos of, of him of him just you know really doing doing the thing you know and. And some of them are funny too. He's got some cool funny videos too. I, I like those. Yeah, it's be, it's be, I got a whole lot of stuff coming from uh, from that aspect. This is something that I personally always wanted to do. Do you, do you have a main uh, Do you have a main uh, a main social media name, or are they all different? Um, Rude Boy underscore Rel. You. That's my Twitter handle, and that's my you my um, Instagram handle. Okay, uh, so rude, guys go there. Rude Boy Rel, without the underscore, can actually take you also to my Facebook fan page, which is just under Anthony Terrell. And awesome. the same as Anthony Terrell on, uh, awesome. on Facebook. So Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I want you guys to follow, to follow him over there because uh, he's got some really, really good, uh, good stuff. Calculating risk and assessing movements on when it's a win and when to escape. Exactly. That's yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, my man John Haggerty, he's got a he's got his own he has a YouTube show too. Nice. So I'll probably have him on here in the future. That'll be cool too. Nice. But uh, yeah, awesome, what awesome. What he's talking about. So wh where's uh? Here's a, here's a good question. Like it, it might be it might be a good question, might be a bad question. I'm not really sure. Um, where where did the name Hell Rail come from? Is there a funny story behind <laughs> that, or is there that something that, like that, that came that from, you were just like I like this name? That, or like that came from my dad. Oh, yeah, no, I'm never, I've never like you can't give yourself. A, you can't listen, anybody. You gave yourself a nickname, put it, throw it in the trash. That's, 
It's no longer your nickname. Great. Your nicknames don't. You nobody gives this up a real nickname. Real nickname was earned or given, and it stuck. I never. That was a like cap that, away to too. Yeah. That came from my dancing days, actually. The hell, real. That a uh, friend of mine started saying it, and it, it ended up sticking. And I was like, I, said, I was a known dancer from from the area, and so you know they knew once you know dancing entailing not just you know showcasing and performing or look at me or just you know club, but as far as battling. You know, b-boy style, break dancing and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So, you know, in the event that I showed up or you, you know, you challenged, then, you know, you're going to get help. And yeah. obviously it matched with her. I was like, whatever. Nice, <laughs> nice. But, uh, I like yeah, that. It stuck. Uh, rest in peace, Bobby. You know, I love him. That was a good friend. Oh, that's the one that nicknamed you that? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Close friend of mine who passed yeah. away. And, um, yeah, he gave me that nickname about 2003. And uh, yeah, so once I started fighting, uh, somebody else gave me uh, the nickname Animal. So that was my name as an amateur. And I remember when um, I had just turned pro and I had just made the uh, prospect of the year list because I turned pro and in that first year I had four four wins, four finishes, well, three finishes, one, one unanimous. And um, I got signed to a promotion, a, a big promotion in the area. And uh, they was asking for all the info and updates and whatnot, and I was just like, I don't, I didn't care for the name Animal because it was so many other animals. All right, it's like, dude, I got a friend named Animal too. Yeah, it was Same like, thing. how how many, you know, how many <laughs> MMA fighters? Nicknames the animal, and I'm just like, what? Yeah. What? What? Is I have that? a friend that has that same nickname too. Yeah, I'm like, what's the actual? <laughs> na- so, what, one I can the, see why you would be. There like, was, a, I mean, don't get me wrong. Some better than this. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I mean, you it know, is as cool. A, it was cool. I mean, I, I, you that. You know, I lived up to the name as an amateur. Yeah, know, animal, yeah, yeah. You know, when I started fighting, because I, you know, I didn't even wait. I just went out there and tried to kill. But um, so I was when I started to think about it, I was like, I don't, I think I want to change that, and it just, it, it hit me one day. I was like, well. That kind of, you know, Anthony Hill. I just, I just feel like I felt like, especially because it was, it was more so a piece of me holding on to that past life, mm-hmm. and the fact that somebody close to me gave me that name, and it, you know, it flowed. So I was like, let's go with that. It's different. It's, 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 you know, it's specific to me. It comes from, you know, from my history, especially as a dancer, which a lot of people in the community knew, you know, knew, knew, knew that's what I used to do, and I still. Do you have any videos? Do. Videos of you dancing? You anywhere? know, it's sad. Well, this is this the saddest. It's the saddest story of my life. Is that all the years that I spent dancing? There's probably one to maybe four times. You know, the 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 world that we live in now wasn't anything like the world that I danced in from two what two thousand until what two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight. Right, right, it? yeah. Times are different now. Two thousand and eight. Yeah, I, I was in there until about two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Is when I started, um, I started seeking other opportunities, and I started getting into um, martial arts and modeling. So, but uh, you yeah, know, the world was no, and that's one thing that I'm really upset about because man, I would have had so much footage. There is some. There, it's funny is that just yesterday was like a four year. You know how Facebook shows you. Yeah, four yeah. Years ago, so there was a there was two videos that was taken of me at Adelphia <laughs> dancing. <laughs> that, that was uh, posted four years ago yesterday, so yeah, that showed up on my feed, and I was just like, I was happy to see it, but I'm, I'm always, it's always a bittersweet thing because it's like one, two goddamn clips. Yeah, out of all the years I've probably got a couple and, good ones out there, and you just, yeah, but you no, just wish so, you would have, what you would have caught. I, I still have all the abilities, so before I kick the bucket, I'm going to be making some dance videos soon too. Oh uh, yeah. Like, I'm going to let it out. It's just a, yeah, it's just a some passion up. of mine. Post some up, tag me and stuff, I man. I want to see. I want to see. Feel. You definitely want to. You definitely want to see a lot of that. Yeah, it. tag me. Like, yo, check you it out right here. A lot of that stuff, man. Just yeah, expressing all my passions. That's I love that stuff. I like to dance too. Growing up, I did capoeira for two years too. So, Get out so of here. My, my, I have a like a like a natural flow. That's a spiritual thing. Yeah, I got the green the green rope. I have a green rope in capoeira. It's like nice. that's like. Some, something like a year at their school. Mm-hmm. Mestre do tour in Philly was. Uh, Get out of here, Askab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I like that style too because I've done other styles too. Yeah, yeah. There's. And, uh, uh, there's I, I like um, their style better there's than uh, some of the other styles. There's Angola. Yeah. Some maybe grunge bean, but there's three different. I like Askabe stuff like that. Yeah, I like especially Ascabe. the way they. Uh, the, 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 the way that trains with them a little bit. I don't know, just the way certain stuff flows. But so you seem real pretty disciplined. So I'd like to touch on that. Like, do you, do you have any morning rituals or anything like that, or anything that kind of helps you with being disciplined? Because 
with uh, obviously you're 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 pretty disciplined like with, with staying in shape like you're like you know you're you're a model you know like uh so um i just i you know over the or do you not feel that disciplined do you feel like you're you're pretty no, naturally I, I used to i you know my pretty girl, naturally I'm pretty fit because you i mean no you know I, I mean like genetic yeah I'm, there's something like maybe i can learn or, or maybe i can get a higher awareness of something that i already uh, knew I, I would shout, like I said, I, I share, but no, I won't, I'm not, also not one of those people in denial of, you know, being genetically gifted. I, I'm not denying that. A lot of right. people in the fitness field who things have come so easily to, they talk about all this, you know, this is the product of this. Yeah, don't, don't make no mistake about it. I'm actually going to make a Throwback Thursday post showing some really old pictures that I actually just recently discovered because people in my circle do, they always give me shit about, you know, looking how I look for my age and my body and not worrying about stuff. And just make no mistake about it, I'm a, I love food just as much as, as anybody else and I have abused it to the point where it has been detrimental to my health. And I have, you know, gotten out of, out of shape. Not, oh, you, I'm not in the pro shape that I am when I'm going to front. No, I've gained weight and seen the results of eating like an ape, like an ape, you know, eat, being a glutton. So no, it, it, it I, I do have to give a credit to. I would say um, I'm, I wouldn't call you know, after the years of this, it's not even uh, it doesn't feel like discipline to me because I eat what I want. Mm -hmm. It's just I know the greater I know the greater There's no discipline as far as food. More, uh, I mean, don't give me like, you, you no, have I'm good so, discipline as far as exercise, probably. Oh uh, yeah, probably my, kind my, of overrun that. My work, yeah, my workout, ethic. Your workout, my your work, workout, my work, my work, my ethic. Fun. Yeah, that that is something that that grew from you know to make to become a professional fighter. I I, I ended up having to adhere to a strength and conditioning regimen that I avoided like the plague, that made me fall even more in love with you know fitness, and it got me in a shape that I could have never imagined, and it also changed my body and that's that's what that's the specific thing i'm going to touch on when i post the uh, when i make that post is because people always talk people like you know people always bust my balls like you always look like that and it's like no <laughs> I'm, let me show you some pictures of what i used to look like <laughs> i'd so, like to see those pictures yeah, it was like no i didn't you know i did thanks mac thanks for like your support that. i didn't always look like that and i i worked my ass off to get into this body you know what i'm saying i i, I eat Specific, you know, that's the thing. So, yeah, I eat what I want when I want, but I know how to eat. So, when I overdo it with one thing, you know, then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll make the. You'll make it up. Yeah, I'll not, I'll probably, you know, like what, my reg regiment wise, I almost, I almost eat the same breakfast daily. Almost. I eat a lot of eggs. That's that's like eighty percent. I tell people that's about eighty percent of my diet. I, there's never there's never a time of day I don't feel like I can't eat an egg, and uh, it's really just knowing how to eat. It's knowing when I'm oh I'm I'm being emotional or I'm, I'm my body's deficit or something or so I'm craving such and such or I'm craving such and such. And I always calculate well how much, what did I do today physically, on top of my exercise and workout before I just take in whatever I decide to take in. And I've been doing this for so long now that I don't even need to have those conversations anymore. It's literally uh, not eating that because I don't know what I didn't do. I, I, don't, I have no problem eating that because I probably didn't eat the many times. Like I said, when I'm in camp, then it's everything's regimented. So everything outside of camp, it's all just me knowing how to modify and be moderate. The key thing that I discovered is moderation, and that's something we all lack. I mean, when I when I choose to indulge, now I've become more moderate in that as opposed to where where I didn't used to be. So it, it also know I also am aware if I take in this amount of calories in one meal, then I know I'm pretty much fine for a significant amount of hours or time to where I won't really necessarily need even need to eat. I know when I want to eat just to eat, and I'm not hungry. Like I said, food is my that's my thing. It's, that's my <laughs> thing. Man. You get. Listen, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good with money unless you say let's go out. I'm like, all right, I'm paying. Let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. I don't care. I, lo I love food. I love to, you know, find new foods. I love to try new foods. I love exploring. And, you know, it's something that, I, you know, I've been, I, I've even been vegetarian for a specific period of time. I've discovered a lot of specific vegetarian foods that I love and I can actually live by. The only thing I can honestly say I can't live without is eggs. I can, I can be completely vegetarian. I'm actually, my whole household right now, I'm actually... We're actually going to 
cut out meat for for quite some time and just focus on eating eating better to feel better. So just keep. You still you know, eat the eggs? I still eat the eggs. Always gonna eat the eggs. Okay. I can't eat that guy. Yeah, hey, that's a good tip. That's a good <laughs> tip for me. I think I, I need to eggs. step it up with, with my eggs. Yeah, man. I, I <clears> working out, eggs. you know, just getting like you know, just just, Water, just making sure you get thing, enough. Another thing, and I actually recently. I do the white that, eggs too. That, uh, I mentioned that's a, that's something I, I, you need to not do. Yeah. Oh, okay. Egg white is missing the majority of the vita- the, uh, of of what you're yeah, yeah. I'm mixing the I'm mixing the, the orange too, but I'll, I'll do more egg whites. Uh, I don't orange know what? The so actual fruit? No, like the the egg yolk. Like I'll oh, have like oh, two okay. regular ones and then like the rest. Okay. Well, yeah, but um, a lot of people stick to egg whites and egg cartons and all this, that other stuff. And, that's, a, that's you wanna, interesting. You want to you want to kind of get away from a lot of processed stuff. And don't get me wrong, it also depends on you know your particular regimen of exercise and training. If you ha- if you even have one, some people don't, and you know that matters. And another factor that a lot of people don't don't uh, factor in is this, is lifestyle. If you have a sedentary lifestyle and you you your body requires movement. It it needs activity. You know, whether it's high intensity or low intensity, I guarantee you have a, you, I guarantee m- longevity for the body that moves more as opposed to the body that doesn't. Yeah. Oh man. You know what? That reminds me of, <clears throat> it reminds me of a saying I heard uh, a long time ago. They say like, <clears throat> planes are made for flying, ships are made for sailing, you know, cars are made for driving, and, and people are made for living. And, and like, if you ever look at like a boat, like a ship True. at the harbor, it's like yeah. rusting away because exactly. it's not moving. Like a house, plants growing through it. Exactly. You know, it's you know, it it's same thing. Exactly. So it's like if you don't, it's like uh, you know, I like it's what perfect. Tony Robbins says too. So that's a good metaphor for that. But I like what Tony Robbins says too. He also says that motion creates good emotion. So like, if you stay still, it's like you're like dying, like right, like you're you're you're. You're going backwards and like you don't is feel something, good. This is something anybody can attest to. You could sit on your couch right now for a significant amount of hours and tell me how you feel after you get up. Even when you sleep too long. Isn't this one thing? The body requires a specific amount of rest, but that's that's that. And then when you break away from that, you tell you know how you feel. You everybody's felt this way. Oh, I slept too long, you get up what? You're groggy, you're tired, you're you're dragging, you it's you know this is this is proven. I, this yeah, is, get them endorphins flowing. This is improving, and you know, and exactly you wake once you get the blood flowing, and exactly and endorphins kick in, and now you now you feel alive. You feel the way you're supposed to feel, and your body actually functions better. You don't have the same functions until your body is up and moving and running. That's why I'm a big fan of warming people up really good before we get into specific training exercises and regimens because you're not going to perform at your best. You're not gonna. Your body's not gonna be as best. It's at, a, it's at risk of injury. It's at risk of, you know, too many things. As, as if if you don't get a good warm up, and that's something I used to avoid. I'm like, can we just get to it, coach? Like, I just want to do it. Got to warm up. You yeah. Know? And that's not, not not just from that point of view, but that's also, you know, from, I'm speaking from experience in how I feel now compared to how I used to feel when I avoided warming up. You know, the reality is, ain't none of us getting any younger. So. You want to be as preventative in what you're doing with your life and your fitness. You know, for the people that are actively fit or just you know have a busy life, you're moving and whatnot. Prevent, prevent, prevention, preventative behaviors. You know, you don't want. Why? Why is it we all wait till something's gotta fall off before we gotta pay attention to it? Yeah, right. You know, you you feel you, li- listening to our body is something that you you know a lot of athletes have probably heard from their coaches or others that we neglect until we've suffered injury. Take it from experience, from somebody, you know, from millions of people with experience. Start listening to your body, and you know, turn that competitive nature down a notch to get the body the quality rest that it really needs to repair and rejuvenate itself so you have what we all really want longevity and just in living let alone doing the physical things that we like to do and for the people that are doing the physical things that they love and like to do you if you heard, ever heard of carpal tunnel you know how does that happen how does that how does something that you know insignificant happen from just typing it's just overuse Injury, technically, time, 
over time and time again. So now you have to take into consideration what you're doing for you know, lifestyle or physical fitness time and time again. Change it up. Give set muscles a break. Give set muscles a rest. Rehydrate them properly and feed them properly. And the, without implementing that proper rest, you're, you're basically just the window of time that you're doing something you loved in is constantly doing this because you're you're just close you just getting yourself closer and closer to you know to to some form of injury that's going to start nagging at you and then we suffer those mildly and we don't listen to our body oh, i think i tweaked something meanwhile you're about to lift again heavy <laughs> you're not yeah. helping the problem oh i think i pulled something meanwhile you're at the track you're you're ready to run again you you what are you doing to nurse set minor injuries so that way it yeah. doesn't become a major injury and now you don't even get to run you don't get yeah. to do what you're trying to do you know what i'm saying it's, just, it's little precautions like yeah. that you know what i'm saying so i try to just hearing you talk just makes clients. me want to go makes me want to go work work out with you <laughs> <laughs> so you, you'll have to put i know you got some kind of event i've been seeing you put stuff on facebook feel free to, to uh, put that in the comment thread too or something later if you like okay under a video because people will be watching the replay of this this is their being it's during a day, not as many people can watch it during a day. That's cool. I definitely I post a so, bunch of stuff to it because I got a lot of things I'm about to so, put together. Yeah, I know. I know a bunch of you are going to catch this replay later on, and they'll probably that'll probably be one of their thoughts. Like, how can they get a hold of you? And well, yeah. you already talked about that. So follow those you, links. You don't mind I, dropping those links in there sure. later on or something. Exactly. Cool. I'll, I'll place them in there specifically. <clears throat> I got a lot of things I'm going to so, put together this summer. We're doing we're doing all, all right with time. Um, but I do have one one really good question. I want to I want to make sure that I, I ask you. We, we've kind of talked a lot about fitness and stuff like that, and the the, tr the truth is, uh, you know, being a professional fighter is a lot of the stuff we talked about. Yes. But uh, but you're you're really a lot more than just that. You're an entrepreneur. You're you're a trainer. We haven't really got to touch on too much of that stuff. But we'll, we'll, you can touch on some of that stuff in the, in this question as it unfolds and things like that. What would uh if you had if you were able to go back like. You know the Anthony Torello you are today, and like what you're doing right now with yourself and your life. Like, if you were able to, because this is a good question, because other people will be able to relate to it, being that they might want to do what you do. Mm -hmm. Like, if you were able to go back in time, like a time machine. That's one of like my favorite questions for the show since I've been doing it. You're able to go back in time in a time machine and give Anthony Torello advice for when he first got started. Like, what do you think you would tell yourself? You got started in what? Because man, I gotta tell you the journey that life put me on to get me into this place of you know I still feel like like in your career like what like what uh like what would uh what kind of advice would you give yourself just just get started like uh, anything particular like uh, any daily rituals that you should be doing uh, you should be practicing patience taking action like what like uh what, what will be best what do you think would be best for you as, as a professional fighter and someone that's a trainer someone that's a model and an entrepreneur and all the things that you are like, but there's no right or wrong answer to it. It's just a matter of yeah, just, like, uh, your perspective. Like, what, what one thing? If there's one thing that even stood <laughs> out to you that could have made a big difference, do you the, think? Well, the one thing that stands out to me now uh, at this point in my life is that um, I would have told because at this point in my life I know how to manage money, and at no point in my life up until now have I known that, and I've worked since I was 14. Yeah, I've always had. Money. So, like the importance of money and, and Save, how to manage it. Saving money. Yeah. I, I, I would tell my younger self: save money, learn how to invest money, learn how to better manage your money. And uh, other than that, I would say. Um, Any books for that or anything like that to do right now? Ah, oh, shit! I've been dibbling. Down. Not, not, not a no, not necessarily a book, but. Honestly, I'm more into networking with people. Yeah. I got I I pull a lot of You pull a lot of information from your, from your, from your networks. From, from, from my network. Robert Kiyosaki's I, a good one. Rich Dad Poor Dad, you read that one? Rich Dad Yeah, I That's I, a good recommendation. I actually read that in two thousand and four. Yeah. And I was just I didn't I didn't even take it in properly. Oh, okay, so I, I got it. I had another guy on the show that, that, that I didn't that read that book and he was mad. That they teach that stuff in school. That's it. I, I know. Yeah. Well, that, well, see, that takes a, that takes your yeah. That, that the conversation can go real far another way. And we're talking about what they don't teach in school because yeah, there's a lot of reasons 
why the world is set up the way it is for those things and not for that type of stuff not to happen. But yeah, that, that's something I, I would, I, it's an issue to me, but um, it's, it's uh, specific to why I'm, you know, I lose as much sleep as I can and get as much done as I am trying to get done because uh, that's a long-term goal is for that um, my son to never have to work for anybody unless other than me or because he chooses to. Um, Cause that's his passion, right? Yeah, do what you do what you want to do. Find a way to do what you want to do and get paid for it. I wish somebody would have told me that ten, fucking twenty years ago. You know, and uh, it still would have been difficult for me because uh, I I have a passion for so many different things, and I had to redefine what success is to me. I had to redefine it. I had to take away all the. What does you know? What what does the world deem as success? What do people that I seek advice from, who are doing things and are successful, and you know, people that I look up to and yeah, think highly of, I, had to, I had to take away everything that was exter uh, external, yeah, as an idea of success, and I had to dig in within myself and say, well, why don't you just what what can you find satisfaction? What can you be happy doing day in and day out? You, Terrell, you have to find that out. And I was able to answer that question. And that's why I'm doing all the things that I want to do. Yeah, that's you know, awesome. That's, that's, A lot of people talk to me about success, and I, I always ask them to define it. Yeah, you know, because it's like, yeah, you can't, cause everybody, because you can't give can, advice no, to somebody you can't. when you don't really know, like, well, how do you define it first, yeah. first off? Cause, yeah, there's a housewife you know, somewhere with two kids and a husband. Yeah. And like you could just go live off she, the land and that you can't, be successful. Exactly, somebody. you like, can't. You can't say it, you if you know if she's happy, that's more successful than if she was, you know, the figurehead, uh, owner of some of some company. That you know that to that level of happiness and gratification with one's day in and day life is more success than any dime you're going to go out in this world and make. Don't, you know, that's what you're going to have. You're going to, you know, people yeah. have to experience that for themselves to realize it. And you're going to introduce you to all my rich friends. Yeah. And they're not as happy as I am. <laughs> I mean, but they're, yeah. they're also in certain, they also, they're in places that I want to be able to be in to further my happiness. And it doesn't come from anything materialistic. It just comes from, you know, what your, yeah. what your capabilities are when you have reached such financial networks and yeah. that's you know that's that's definitely a part that's definitely a part of the goal that um you know would yeah. have liked to gotten to sooner but I mean yeah pe being told to save my money when I was younger would have you know that and then learn how to manage better that would have been a, a, a massive help I, you know I've made tons of money over the years and now it's all going yeah so it's like oh cool cool yeah I appreciate appreciate your thoughts yeah and uh yeah <clears throat> to what to what you're saying there too, it actually made me think of Warren Buffett because you're talking about like people being happy with and without money and things like that. And he he was saying he was on stage. He was like, hey, he's like, I'm not, not that much different than you. He's like, I you know I eat three times a day. I got clothes on my back. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, I think money is very important. I'm, I'm very I'm, I'm really into making money. <laughs> so I will I won't even uh, I won't downplay it at all. But uh, but uh, yes. but yeah, but but it Maybe. is but it is internal, you know. You know, you know what makes you happy and what makes you feel successful. So I got one last question. Now we're going to do like some closing thoughts here. Um, is there anything about you that not too many people know? It's just like a, a fun personal question. <laughs> <laughs> like any strange things you do or anything like that that not a lot of people know you do or. I don't, I, don't, I don't think a lot of people know. <laughs> and this is something I plan. Like I look forward to showcasing. Actually, I don't think a lot of people know how crazy I. Am. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think a lot of people know how like f people this is why and this is why I mean I'm, I'm okay with how I'm actually glad it's this way now because I'm going to it's going to be very shocking when I start uh, releasing the footage and really putting out content that I plan on putting out because a lot of people know me from fighting they don't know me a lot of people know me they just see images they think you know they some people think I'm you know uh, conceited cocky you know, just, you know, they don't, they get this depiction of me, especially, and this, the, I don't know what it is about fighting, people have a very, very skewed uh, concept of, of a fighter, 
Like when people meet, like I don't, I don't, I don't tell anybody I fight. When I like when I'm out at functions or whatever, depending on depending on the setting, I usually don't tell people because that takes people. <laughs> so it takes people so far somewhere else, and they're looking at you like, what, what, how, why, what are you, what? Oh man, and it's just like I'm. Uh, we are, we are, we are very, very, very normal people who, you know, for whatever reason, can tap into, you know, set primal, <laughs> you know, places to to do what it is that we do. But it's also a sport and an art form that a lot of us go out go about it as, you know, as martial arts. And and people don't people don't have they don't they can't put two and two together. They don't. Oh, you're so but you're so well spoken and you're funny and you. you what if you don't want to? <laughs> it's like it's. I don't I don't know how to explain it, but I'm I'm very I'm I'm a very I'm very funny. I'm very goofy. I'm I'm, a, I'm obsessed with comedy. I'm obsessed with laughing and loving and. People don't get that when they look at me. People don't get that until oh, they, okay. Until I can they, see that a little bit from your videos. Because your videos are funny. Yeah, well, yeah, you yeah. See, so it's you know some of them not as I much as some more not stuff as. Like that. That's like what I'm that saying. Yeah, stuff. that's the, I, I've I've been into that type of stuff before. You know, this, like I said, this this is also a part of you know you know the household I grew up in. You know, everybody made fun of everybody. Everybody picked on everybody. I'm the oldest. I'm the oldest. You kidding me? I was the I was the main person causing trouble in the house. You know what I'm saying? And. You know, from you know, just like the kung fu movies, there was the comedy movies, and you know, all this stuff just kind of starts to begin to become a part of who we are, you know, as people. And I mean, listen, I love it, but I'm just as much as I, you know, can I enjoy making fun and laughing and loving. I, I, I have no problem being the butt of all those jokes as well. You know, I laugh at myself all the time. I'm really, I'm really goofy. I'm really funny. I think so. I plan on showcasing that. So. But not <laughs> I love only that, it. I'm know, looking just, forward to seeing that, some more of that stuff. That I would say, I would say people don't know how much of an art geek I am. I'm insanely crazy about art. One of the first things I've ever did or was good at was drawing. And uh, that, that my grandma, rest in peace, she had all, she she kept a lot of my art as a kid. And that's something I did a lot as a kid. I used to sit down and do puzzles and stuff with her. I, I delve into all that stuff and I, I'm always open about my you know my my obsession and love for art but people don't really get to see it because my page is kind of more just along the lines of business but that's also a part of something like I said I just want to put all my passions in one bottle and I want to shake that bottle up and I just want to pour it on the canvas and the world being that canvas that's you know this is what I'm trying to do with you know the time that I still have here and uh now that I know that, you know, for me, success is being able to do all those things and, you know, be financially comfortable doing it. That's, this is, you know, these is, this is the, the order in which I'm doing things, you know, getting, you know, getting stuff taken care of business wise with fitness and fighting and find, you know, finding a, a outlet and a platform to be able to do all these things, make decent money doing them. So that way I can continue to do what I want to do. But. I started a company in January, and I plan on. That's my long-term goal. My long-term goal is uh, running this production company, and um, that's going to give me the outlet to produce all the things that I love and put them together, and you know, be able to direct and create it, create it, just create it. You know, if it's just from an image, if it's advertising and marketing for a set business, or just. You know, personal projects to being able to make a, a short film. You know what I'm saying? I've been into, yeah. I've been into that. You know, that was you know the first thing I ever decided I wanted to do. You know, as a, even as a teenager was acting, and it's like this is something I want to be a part of. Yeah. I want to do, and it's like, well, it takes time, it takes this, it takes that, and it's like, yeah, I get it. So you know, when I you know when my, my you know when I'm not training, when I'm not uh, working in you know fitness, I'm working with people that do film I'm working with photographers I'm you know other well me yeah. you know from the connections that I made through you know through you know through modeling and whatnot like I, I put myself in all these situations to learn as much as I can learn and you know just looking for a way to release that creativity and uh, I'm I'm very close to a very a happy place where I'm going to be able to constantly update with content and do the things that I'm trying to do, and it's just going to grow from there. And I'm I'm excited about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited, excited for you, man. 
I appreciate you coming on the show, man. You're an interesting dude, man. Thank you for having me. It's a and, pleasure. It was a and, pleasure uh, being here. Yeah. So, really like I said, folks, I'll, I'll have I'll have Anthony put the, put the, uh, you know his links for his social media and stuff like that. And I'm looking forward to maybe maybe coming on coming on there and working out with you, man. Maybe Let's doing do it. maybe doing like a funny funny clip or maybe something, with next, you, man, or something, next man. Next segment, I'm from Ford, all Ford. Yeah, man. I've seen you. I've seen you hit people and the pads fly off and stuff, <laughs> man. So that's <laughs> yeah. so that's great. But uh, yeah, we're at the top of the hour, so. I have to close. I have to close it out. I have to. I have to, to get out of here. I appreciate everybody coming, uh, especially appreciate Anthony. Um, you know, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next whatever it takes Wednesday. Um, tune in. We appreciate you. Peace. Good shit.